that a screaming across the sky? No, it was just the Northern Lights, which are having one of their best years in half a century. We are here right now in the Rose Center for Earth and Space. And to help us understand the science behind the spectacle is Mordecai Mark McLow, who's curator here, and you're also chair of the astrophysics department. The science behind the Northern Lights, they're not just called the Northern Lights. What's their official name? Their Latin name is the Aurora Borealis, which means Northern Lights. Which means the Northern Lights, right. <laughs> And people know it, and people know it often by the Northern Lights. They often wonder sort of, what is it? What causes it? Okay. Well, the Northern Lights is actually one of the major manifestations of the sun and the earth directly interacting. The sun blows a solar wind, gas coming off the sun at a million miles an hour, and that streams through the solar system. It's very hot gas. It starts out over a million degrees. and all the electrons have been torn off their atoms. So you have electrons and ions streaming through the solar system. If that stuff impacted the Earth's atmosphere, it would be bad news. Right. Luckily for us, the Earth has a strong magnetic field. These charged particles quack into the magnetic field and go around. And that's Whew. producing the colors. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> they get trapped in the magnetic field, come sweeping back much slower by now, and a few of them trickle down the field lines all the way into the Earth's atmosphere. And that very little remnant of the million mile an hour solar wind is still enough to give us all those fancy lights. That's unbelievable. So all that, and it's just sort of that last moment where we're getting these beautiful the, colors. Yes. And are the colors ever, can we predict what they're going to be? We can't predict for any particular aurora, but we understand where the colors are coming from very high in the atmosphere these energetic particles are slamming into oxygen atoms, popping electrons up that are going to come back down towards the nucleus, emit photons, and they're going to be red. Further down, they often collide with other atoms quickly, then we get green out. And we also get blue from nitrogen. Right. So it really depends on exactly where the particles are hitting, what colors and what shapes you're going to get. But what about when they hit, Mordecai? Can we ever get a sense of that during the year and yes. predict that? OK, we can't predict it across the year. But what we do know is that any time there's a big solar flare, the solar wind speeds up, gets a lot stronger. And the next day, when the solar wind gets to the Earth, we get a nice big aurora. So where in the world do you go to watch the world's best light show? Our own Kathleen Squire, she has sussed out the best places on the globe to see the northern lights. Let me guess, it's not out my bedroom window? No, Wendy. <laughs> Afraid not. Too bad. <laughs> All right. Looks like I'm going to have to travel a little bit. I'm going to go to Norway. What's sort of the nicest way I can make this happen? Wendy, picture this. You're on a ship sailing through the fjords, which are nice and calm during this time of year, ice-free. Okay. You're sitting in a jacuzzi. You have a glass of champagne in your hand, of course and there's a beautiful light show overhead, the Northern Lights. What about Sweden? If you go to Sweden, and if you're staying at the Ice Hotel, what they'll do, the ice hotel. yes, <laughs> what they'll do is they'll send you up in a nine-seat plane to get up close and personal with the lights. A little closer to home, at least here in the U.S., Canada. What could I do in Canada? This I might actually be able to do. Right, in Canada, you can actually command your own team of dogs for a dog sled and cross the polar landscape with dogs towing the way. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, are you by yourself on a dog sled? Or are you with multiple other people? You're with other people. You're with guides. But during the day, they will train you to lead your own team. So what you're telling me is I'm basically going to have to get on a plane or drive to Canada. Yes. <laughs> yes. We always think we have our own light show here in New York City every day. Not the same as the Northern Lights. Not the same. All right, you've set us straight. Thanks so much, Kathleen Squires. Thank you, Wendy.